Good morning. It's good to be here in this morning, and I, I praise my Lord for the time we worship together. I just to remind my home church and uh, the gentleman who make the invitation for the Lord's Supper, he make in the final this announcement. If you are a born-again Christian, and if you are baptized, you can join us in the Lord's Supper. This is what we are doing home, exactly like this. I say to the people, exactly these words. So it's really good to be in this morning and worship together. I'm, um, I'm bringing you greetings from Romania, and I hope you understand my English. I've never been to English class. They don't teach us English in Romania. During the communism time, they really teach us Russian and French. I don't speak Russian. I don't speak French. Um, and if you can understand me, that's all right. I'm from the, from the southern part of Romania, so you can tell I'm a Romanian redneck. <laughs> I would like to open the Bible with you this morning and together to, to see what God is holding for us, what God is have a treasure for us in this morning. And um, I know there is a sign in Romania, we said Americans will say time is money. I don't know if it's time is money in the church, but in the church, time is time. So I will, st I will try to stay with the time. Um, one of the problems in Romania we have is this. We used to have a three, three hours church service, and we, now we have two. And some people are upset because we have only two hours. And I'm not kidding. Um, please open your Bible to Exodus chapter 3. And uh, in the time I have uh, together, I will try to to see what God is holding for us here. I don't know if you ever had an, uh, in your mind idea to meet somebody very important, somebody you really like, like um, a star, somebody from Hollywood. I don't know. I'm not a really big fan of the Hollywood. Or some, um, I don't know, American um, football player. For instance, I would like to see Messi, you know, the European football. I just watched yesterday, and um, I would like for a, from some time to see him. But one of my dreams was to sometime, if it's possible, to talk with uh, David Jeremiah, one of my favorite um, speakers. You know, I really love him. So God gave me this opportunity in one day to worship in, in, in the church where he served that church because it's not his church, it's God's church. And I, I'm, I'm telling to me, I said, I'm not going home without talking with this man. So it's, um, I have a friend with me, and I said, hey, Arnie, I really want to talk with David Jeremiah. David Jeremiah. And he said, it's a big problem. I said, what's the problem? And he pointed a man. He was big. He said, that man is the problem. Was his bodyguard. And I said, what? A bodyguard for a preacher? He explained me why. So Arnie, my friend, when he talked with that gentleman and they come to agreement, I'm not a dangerous person, so I can go there and talk with David Jeremiah. And I had this conversation with him probably seven minutes, and I enjoyed the conversation, and I hope he enjoyed the conversation too. And uh, finally, he gave me a book, you know, and uh, he signed, and uh, I still have that book, and I read uh, that book. But it wasn't a, a, a very important moment in my life. I would treasure that. But let me tell you something. In this morning, more important than David Jeremiah, more important than Messi or somebody from the Hollywood, is your meeting with God. And my question would be if you ever had a meeting with God. So look into um, to this scripture, Exodus chapter 3, from verse 1 to verse 6. six we'll, we'll see the most important meeting with God from Moses' life. Well, I'm assuming Moses, in his life, he really had a lot of meetings with different people. You know, he was a prince, prince in, Egypt, in Egypt. He was at a... Um, Probably one of the well-known people from there, but he never had a meeting with God until this chapter from Exodus, Exodus chapter 3. So what, what I would like to see, just to read these scriptures and together look into what the scripture said. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of the fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consuming. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does it not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to himself from the bush 
and say, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. So when the Lord, uh, then he, he said, though, do not draw near to this place. Take your sandals of your feet, for the place you are stand is a holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hide his face for the for he was afraid to look upon God. This is the this is the best, this is the, the moment when when Moses had a meeting with God. And first of all, I want to say knowing about God doesn't mean you know God. Because Moses was kind of the, the man who really knew about God. Just think about just think about his history. He was born in a very godly family with a very godly parents and a father and the mother who were raising him. You know, in a certain way they raised him. We know he knew the history. Well, this family they already have they already have had two children, a boy and a girl, or the girl and the boy was actually the the order. And after a while, they somehow God really blessed them to have another child. And Moses was born in the time when it was not good to be a boy. The think about Pharaoh just, just come up with the idea, any single boy who will be born from the, from the Jewish family have to be killed. So this family is having, a, they, they supposed to have an, another child. And probably their prayer, I don't find this in the Bible. I just try to imagine this. Probably their prayer was when, when the mother was, she's pregnant like this, and the father also was praying, God, please don't give us a boy. Because every single boy is supposed to be killed. But when the time for delivery came, I'm, I'm sure that the question of the mother was first time when, when she heard screaming the child, what is? And the answer was, is a boy. And I'm assuming she said, oh boy. <laughs> you know the story. Three months, they hide that boy. And if you are reading in a, in a, in a, in a chapter 11, you know, that great uh, chapter of uh, uh, Hall of Flame, what, what, what um, is written in there, you know, is in a very interesting, is a very interesting verse, uh, chapter 11 from, from Hebrew, and uh, uh, 23 is the verse, by faith Moses, when he was born, was, uh, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king command. They were not afraid. So they raised Moses, and I'm sure they tell to Moses this story because, you know, Moses ended up being, fi uh, being fed by, by his mother. And Moses knew about God. But Moses is, uh, according with the Bible here, is um, 80 years old. But he never met God. He knew about God, about God. He knew all, all his stories, you know, how he was put in, in that. In my translation, is a small casket. Putting in the, in, the Niver, in the Nile River. And how God protect him. But he never Never having a meeting with God. And this is the moment when Moses is leading his flock beyond, beyond that desert. And for the first time in his life, he really realized there is a God. And that God is a personal God. So let me ask you in this morning, not if you know about God. But let me ask you if you really ever meet with God. If you ever had an, a, in your life a time when you surrendered your life to Christ... Maybe you know a lot about God. And in this country, a lot of people probably know about God. But it's not important this. It's very important to make Jesus Christ your personal Savior. And you are doing this, you, know, you can do this in different ways. But it's, this is not the, the goal of our, our time here. And secondly, when you meet God, to meet God, you have to cross your own desert. The Bible said, in one day Moses took his flock and he, um, to the back of the desert. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm assuming this. In every morning for 40 years, Moses was taking his flock, you know, and he went with the flock and just stopped right there where the desert starts. But in one day, he was like, I want to go beyond this. I want to see what is beyond this desert. For 40 days, every single day, to do the same, 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 same things. It's not fun. 
In one day, Moses took his, his flock beyond the desert, and uh, you know what happened? I don't know what is your desert, what is between you and God. I know what was between me and God. But sometimes you have to cross that desert. It's not easy. You know, people, they really like sometimes just to walk in the desert, like Moses. For 40 days, he was not able to pass beyond that. Maybe it's a habit in your life. Maybe it's something who keep you away from God. But maybe it's the culture where you belong to. I know how it's in my country. When somebody who became not a Baptist, well, I'm a Baptist, but they don't call us Baptists in there. They call us repenters, which is a good biblical name. So when somebody will decide to, to, to become a member in a, in a Baptist church, everybody knows that will be a repenter. But he has to cross all obstacles, all the obstacles there are between him and God. The family sometimes will kick them out from the, because they became, became repenters. We have two ladies in our church. One of them have three children. He was pregnant. She was pregnant with the fourth one. And the father said, now you go and take an, have an abortion. And she said, I'm not taking any abortion. I just learned from, from the scriptures that this is sin. So the father said, if you don't go to the, doc, to the doctor to have an abortion, you leave the home. She left the home. Three children, the fourth one was born. He never accepted her back. He was like, I don't care, you know, if you, you get baptized or something like that, but I don't want another child. So that lady was, was able to, cro to cross all this desert, all these obstacles, you know, put faith in God, put her faith in God, and believe God. And I'm telling you what, a small church from, from, our, from our county found about this, and they just took all these children and the lady, and God Help another big uh, help her in a big church from Romania bought a house for, for, for her. Was another lady not very far from that village, and she came to, to the church for over one year. And the father said, If you are joining the church, if you are joining the, the repentance church, and you'll be baptized in, one, in that day, you have to leave the family. So after one year, she talked with the pastor and said, What are we going to do? And the pastor said, You have to decide. The Bible said if somebody loves more the family, the mother, the father, the son, more than, than me, is not worthy of me. So that, that lady took that decision to be baptized. After she was baptized, went home. And the father beat, beat her, the, the husband beat her mostly to death and kicked her out with three children. We took two of them and put in our church orphanage. And now they are in the church. Two of them are married, very godly very godly children. She never divorced that man, but that man never accept her back. I don't know what is in your life, in my life, you know. Sometimes it's something to keep us away from God. But are we willing to pay the price? Are we willing to pay the price? Because this is what happened with Moses. Moses, um, in the book of uh, Hebrew, he said he don't want to stay and be with Pharaoh, you know. He want to be with people, with God people, and suffer with them. So he, when, when you talk about meeting with God, we talk about also, by the way, how God revealed himself. And we read in the scripture, Moses went there, you know, and uh, look what happened. There is a bush in there. It's burning and, but it's not consuming. It's nothing new for Moses. You know, is God gave me the chance to, to, to go to the Mount Sinai. Um, two months ago was a free trip, believe it or not. Um, God can do miracles. He's in charge of that. So I was, I'm going. So it, it's really hot. And sometime all these small bushes, they just start to burn. Then Moses is looking to that bush and something is different. Is burning but not consuming. And Moses is like, I want to go and see. But God said, Moses, took off your shoes. The land you are crossing on is a holy land. God is the one who revealed himself. God is the one who really make the rules. God is revealing and he is... Uh, he revealed himself, and he said to Moses, you know, he said, Moses, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And if you're reading the scriptures, it's this amazing, amazing, uh, amazing scripture who said, I am who I am. 
God, if God will not reveal himself to us, we are not be able to reach God. But in Jesus Christ, he revealed himself to us. Everything we have, we have in Jesus Christ through Holy Spirit. But also after God is revealing himself to us, God is the one who established the rules. Just look here. He told Moses, Moses, pull off your shoes, sandals, because this is the holy, holy ground. Well, being a Romanian, and by the way, there is a lady from Romania back there, Buna Dimineața. And um, being a Romanian, to come in this country, you need a visa from your government. So you have to go to the American embassy in Bucharest. It's a huge, nice uh, embassy. And um, it's outside of the city of Bucharest, which is our capital. And um, they establish the rules. They are the ones who are making the rules very clear. So i just give you an example. And just think about if the American embassy have the right to make some rules for us and for you too, they are different for the American citizens, but they'll still be there. God have the right to, to make rules too. So this is the time when I went to the American embassy to renew my visa. And by the way, my son, they denied my son three times. He said look like a you know, dangerous man probably for this country. <laughs> so um, I went there and what really shocked me the f first, there is no parking line for the people who are coming to, to apply for a visa. And I was upset because I had to drive around to find a, a place. And, you know, this is a neighborhood. And most of the people from the American embassy are living in there. And we have a big sign, don't park here, no park here, no here. I was like, I have to park somewhere. <laughs> so I really like, you know, if, well, according with my opinion, they should reserve for me a big, huge spot on my name in there. <laughs> it's not like this. You go there and they, you, you pull everything you have in your pocket. And they check you. And after you went there, you know, you just, oh, before that. Took me one week to fill all the form on the internet. And by the way, to pay $150. So I went there and they move you from an office to another office to another office to another office. And they ask you all kinds of questions. This is the way how they, how they are. There's nothing wrong. They establish the rule. But God, who created you and me, he don't have the right to establish the rule. If you tell me, pull your shoes off, I have to do. I don't know what, you know, I would like sometime, you know, because I'm reading in, in a scripture in, a, in, a, in, a, in the New Testament. They said, just the old men have to took off the old clothes and the new men have to put a new clothes. And Paul said, if somebody was a liar, no more. If somebody was a stealer, no more. If somebody was a fornicator, no more. If somebody is a greed person, no more. If somebody was a mean person like I was, as my daughter. <laughs> have to become a kind person. Took off the old clothes and put the new one. Why? Because you have a meeting with God. And when God is calling you and revealed to you, you have to take off your shoes. Maybe it's just the habit. Maybe it's the culture. Maybe, you know, I know how it's in this country. Believe it or not, I read a lot about your country. Yeah, you are going down. Unfortunate. We go down too. All the world is going down. Uh, it's not funny to be a Christian today for some people. But you have to be, because you are salt and you are light. This is what God, God called us to be, to be salt, to give test to this world, and also to be light, because there's a lot of darkness uh, around us. When I, will, I, will, I will finish, and because David told me not to, to pass uh, 11.35, I already passed one, one minute, David, sorry. <laughs> So God has established the rules. But if you really have an appointment with God, a meeting with God, you are not the same after that meeting. Look what happened with Moses. Moses was not the same after this meeting with God. You are a completely changed person when you really met God. 
If you are really a born-again Christian, you are not the same. And if I am the same, if I will be the same, that will be, will be a big question about being a born-again Christian. People have to know I am a new person. If somebody is in Christ, Paul said, is a new creature, is a new creation, all things from the past are gone. I'm not keeping some of them because I like it, because I'm a new person. And a new person will listen and will do what God is telling him to do. I was born in a, in a, in a, in a very, very godly family. My father was in a, a Baptist preacher starting from 1955 when he was ordained. Not for a long time because they didn't let him to, 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 uh, be, uh, to be pastor anymore. He was arrested four times. First, first time in 48, second time 50. Well, when my father was arrested second, uh, third time, was in a very far, far away from the south, from the, 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 the place where I am, nearby the Dracula Castle. And um, he was doing church in there, starting churches around these this, uh, small villages. And in every single village, this is 55, 1955. In every single village, you know, the, the communists, they were taking take the power, and the Russian army is there. They were there until 65. And uh, every single person who would come to preach the gospel in that time was an enemy, especially being a Baptist, because, you know, in, uh, in the 50s, one of your presidents was a Baptist, Harry Truman. He was not a good uh, president, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> I don't know about being a Baptist. But I don't know what he said. He said, the buck stopped here, was in his desk. Okay, so being a Baptist was not really... They said, you are pro-America, pro-America. So my father was arrested. And um, before to be arrested, this man told him, if you are coming back, I will arrest you. So my father said, I went home. And for 30 days, twice a week, I pray, I, I fast, and I pray every day. And, and my prayer was, please, God, when I'm going back to this, gen to this, this um, village, Make this gentleman to be somewhere in another place, not to be there for 30 days, twice a week. He, he fasted. So 30 days passed. He said, I have to go there because he was a completely changed person. He went there. He stepped out from, from the train. And in the um, railroad station, the first person he saw was that gentleman who promised him he will arrest him. That happened. They arrest him. This was Saturday. They arrest him Sunday night, and they, they tortured him one night long. They took him to, to uh, another, to uh, the city, Curte de Arges. I'm telling this from my Romanian friend. And um, they put him in a, in a prison in there and tortured him for another 12 hours. And before to, 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 to leave from the railroad station, a gentleman, a brother from that small church, came to my father crying. And he hold some money in his hand, and he give that money to my father and said, these are the money to, to have when you are going in a prison. I'm telling you, people in Romania, they were in that time prison for 15 years. I know people who were killed for being Christian. So he give this to my father this money. My father put the money in, the, in his packet. So he went there, and finally, after they tortured him again in, in this city, the, the head of the, of the, was in the 24th of January. The head of, the, of this, um, of this um, um, security uh, point said to my father, you know what, if you give me 700 lei, I will release you. 700 lei, that means over two months salary. So my father never counted that money, but he knew he had a lot of money in his packet. So he started to count money. They were there exactly 700 lay. I said God is the one who changed people. He God can do miracles. And the man said, well, okay. I promise you I'll release. He took the money. He don't give any receipt. Put in the money in his packet. He let my father to go, to go home. So he said, I, I walked from there, from that office. And I, I went, I count my money to buy a ticket. And he said, 
I went to the railroad station, and they raised up the price in that night with 25 ban, a division of one, like, let's say, 25 cents for you to understand. And he don't have the money. And the lady from there, from the office, said, you don't give money, you don't buy a ticket. So my father just walked from there and said, start to pray and said, God, you're sent Peter to fish a fish to pay the taxes for the temple. You are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? He's not changing. So my father went to, the, to a river and said, I'm, I was going to the river just to refresh because I was very tired. Walked to the river and he wore some step, like these steps. And the last step, step was in, um, in the water, very shallow water. And he said, I just lean over to wash and right in the water were 25 cents. God is the God of 700, but the God of 25 cents. But you know, only when you meet him, only you have an uh, appointment with him and give your life to him. I pray in this morning for the people who never met, met God to take this step and to come to our God, our beloved God. The one who loves so much that give it his son for us. Yes, God is love. But God is a consuming fire. Yes, God loves sinners. Somebody said. But if you are reading in the, in the Bible, God hates also people who are not able to live their life and meet with him. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you for your word, for the way you are reaching to us, for the way you are sending your son to come to us and to redeem us. I want to thank you because you are a God who takes care of every single of our sins. I'm asking you to bless us with the knowledge, with the wisdom to live for you and for your glory. Amen. Now, as the worship team comes forward, we're going to sing a song of invitation as we do every week. Uh, I invite you to stand with us. This is your time to do uh, some heart work with, with what the word says uh, that Virel brought to us this morning. Where are you in your life? Have you met the Lord? Um, is he calling you to walk through a desert? Is there a place in your life that you need prayer for? Know that we do not walk this Christian life alone. We are here together to walk through it with you. And so as we sing this song of invitation, if the Spirit of God has laid something on your heart that is not of us, that is of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit speaks in His Word now, today, now is the hour of your salvation. Do not pass up this time if the Lord has spoken to you.